Hey my beautiful bitches, it's me, Fiona St. James, and welcome to another episode of Fiona's Coffee Talks. And as always, I like to start off every day with a fresh black hot cup of coffee. Hold the cream! I'd love to. And of course, I think of my favorite quote of the century by Oscar Wilde, which says, life is too important to be taken seriously, so lighten up, folks. All right, so today's topic is, drumroll please, art imitating life. So... I thought of doing this because about a month ago I was uh, working on a set of a TV show, not at liberty to say which one, but uh, it was interesting because I was hired to like do a scene at the beginning, a yoga scene, and then they were like, oh, could you also do stand-in work? So, uh, which I was like, oh, okay, and it, I kind of didn't want to because that first scene was going to be over in a few hours and I wanted it to be a short day, but anyway. I ended up agreeing to that and so I ended up being there all day so it was lucrative and you know you get paid a little more for standing work but so I'm standing and it was the last scene it was this big scene and there was maybe about 10 people in the scene uh, a few of which the people that were speaking so I was standing in for one of them then they were like oh could you also do background in the scene so the scene was basically like it was a meeting like a sexual compulsive anonymous meeting, which I remember years ago, 30 years ago, I used to go to SCA meetings and, and I, after the fact, would say, kidding around, I go to SCA meetings to pray on the week. <laughs> I'm terrible, I know. Anyway, so the characters, uh, one was Muslim, one was Indian, he was a, a Sikh. So they, when they were doing their share in the scene, uh, they were talking about religion. Now, my whole background with religion is that uh, I don't speak about religion. I don't speak about my own background with it because it was always a little bit of a cause of angst for me. So the, even in my book, The Life and Crimes of Fiona St. James, I don't talk about religion. Uh, and that's the only part of my life that I've always been very private about. Uh, so, but... I mean, here goes, I was baptized Catholic, but then when I was maybe like three years old, you know, my mother started studying with the Jehovah's Witnesses. And I think that had everything to do with the fact that my dad was a bit of a tyrant. And here was my mother, you know, with four kids and we're all like a year apart. And I've always said, I think one too many Jehovah's Witnesses knocked on her door. And because she, I guess, needed help or like needed whatever, uh, we, uh, she, started speaking to them and then we started going to the kingdom hall but it was always like done behind my father's back he did find out when probably when i was about eight years old and the shit hit the fan and it was traumatic so because of that reason alone i i just would rather not talk about it so fast let me backtrack then so here it is this particular scene and the two main characters were doing their shares and it was like four or five pages of dialogue and then all of a sudden they're going on about the one was saying how like you know his family was religious but he doesn't even know how much they even believed in god or cared about religion per se it was more like they were anxious about it and uh and and as they're giving their shares and basically saying how like you know their parents are miserable and all of this and that and saying how, you know, their religious background kind of uh, fucked them up to a certain degree. It, I'm sitting there listening to them and I had no idea what the scene was about. And for four or five hours, they're doing this scene over and over and I'm relating to everything that they're saying. And it's kind of finally making me face my own demon for lack of a better term. And for the entire time that they were filming, I was such an emotional wreck. And it was a small scene. Like I said, there were only like 10 of us. So imagine there's two cameras and we're in a round with, in a circle, of course, like all meetings usually are. So, you know, the cameras are focusing in on all of us. And I remember even one of the last takes, they were like, okay, so now we're gonna get everyone's reaction. Well, I had been reacting for the whole four hours and it was reaching a point where I was like starting to lose it. And I remember thinking, you motherfuckers better hurry up because I think I'm gonna fall off the chair. <laughs> I'm gonna collapse. Because I was really like reacting 
to it. And so it was interesting because like, I, while I was experiencing it, uh, you know, with filming. So, I mean, I guess it probably made for good, uh, good camera reaction. Cause I noticed also like what, whenever the two DPs would, you know, from my peripheral vision, I could see what like the camera would like stop on me. Uh, you know, here he is with the camera and there, there was someone pulling the, the trolley, pulling the camera on the trolley. And then he would, they would both be like, stop. And then they would like leave it on me. And I kind of couldn't look. And I was like looking down because I'm like, oh shit. And I'm thinking to myself, get the camera off me. I'm going to lose it. Uh, so for, for me, what was so wonderful about it was at the end of it all, it occurred to me, oh my God, I've always been so like not open about this part of my life. And I was speaking to a friend of mine after the fact. And, uh, and I mentioned this to him. He was like, wow. Like he found it interesting because I'm so open and public about every aspect of my life, except for this one. And, you know, and, and I've never done a YouTube video where I actually speak about my religious background. Uh, but, but hearing these two characters and t them telling their stories about like, you know, how religion kind of like, mess them up or I don't know if that's the right word I should use but you know because the, their parents were like you know not happy and miserable and anxious about God and then they were relating that to their own sexual addiction which you know I don't I don't think I'm a sex addict but I do enjoy it so I don't necessarily you know put those two that and religion in the same a sentence, but, but they were, but it was for, when all was said and done, I remember like getting off set and going home and I was still really emotional. And then I felt really kind of, uh, incredible about it. Like I felt so blessed and fortunate that this particular scene really kind of made me face it and, and made me open up about it and made me be okay with it. And you know, a lot of times when something like this happens and I have any kind of a epiphany of any sort, I'm always like, oh, that's going to be a YouTube video. And without hesitation, I thought that. And I said, you know, I, I should talk about it. I don't think, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing. And, and I don't by any means, you know, think that religion is this, this or that. I'm spiritual. You know, I, I don't belong to any organized religion. I think if people have that in their lives and if it's working for you, so long as you ain't a hypocrite and you're going to be a bitch six, seven days a week and then think that, you know, confessing your sins makes it okay, actually be a kind, nice person and be Christian-like. And then, then, and to me, that's what religion is all about. Like, you know, I always speak about the universe providing. And then I've always said that if you want something you know, you could will things to happen, but you have to be a, a kind individual, good person. And then you have to actually say the words out loud in order for things to come your way. And I was thinking about that before I shot this video and I thought, hmm, you know, I guess that's in my own way, but my way of praying, you know, I may not necessarily like get on my knees and put my hands like that and, you know, and be like, dear God, or like pray like that. But I guess me speaking out to the universe and honey, half the time I speak to myself, I'm speaking out loud just to, just to get things out there. So, so maybe that is my form of prayer that, uh, that, that I didn't even think of it that way till I was going to shoot this. So all in all, I think I'm a better person for being able to finally, I mean, I'm 57 and, you know, I've always just been like, I don't like talking about religion and I don't like talking about my experience with it because it always was sort of a cause for angst. And, you know, even in grammar school, it's like everyone was Catholic. So then I was bullied and made fun of and picked on because I wasn't Catholic or, you know, obviously for being gay. And, and then also, you know, kids can be mean. And because I'm not Puerto Rican, I'm Ecuadorian, then I would even like be made fun of because, oh, you're not Puerto Rican. You can't win to save your life. But all of these things made me a stronger person. And, uh, and me facing this and actually 
getting to a point where I can be comfortable enough to speak about it. And, and I, don't, uh, I don't put my parents in any bad light. And I think that was my hesitation from the get-go, like not putting it in my book and not writing and not speaking about it is because I don't want to like say anything negative about them or, but you know, people are who they are and, and they do the best that they can do. And, uh, you know, those were the cards that were dealt to me. And so now here it is a zillion years later, I can finally talk about it. So I'm happy about that. And I'm happy that I have this uh, outlet to do so. Anywho, so art imitating life. Great how you could be on set and suddenly you can relate to something so much that it gives you the, the courage to actually speak about it and, and not feel badly about it. So I love that about life. All right, guys. So if you like what I have to say, thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, and I hope everyone is well. Love you.